everyone. I'm McKenna. Quick note before I start. I had one of those lovely, hey, your flight's going to get in at 2 a.m. things last night. So if I'm a little shaky, I apologize in advance. Um, another thing, absolutely feel free to tweet at me, do whatever the things. Um, it's my first talk, really. So uh, another thing I wanted to mention is um, if you kind of resonate with the whole, like, takes a while to be a trans person, get up here and speak. If you're still in that mode, please feel free to find me afterwards if any of this resonates with you. Cool, so I'm gonna talk about how community is contribution. Um, I think in open source especially, we have this idea where like code comes first mm. and everything else comes after. We started to like move more into the idea where like you can document things, you can bring up issues, but I really wanted to like nail the point that like maybe it's the opposite way around. So I'm going to focus on a project that I work on, which is Refuse Restrooms. I'll get into what this is if you're not familiar. And I'll talk a little bit about my story joining, because that itself talks about community a bit. Um, and then also how community has helped build the project. So Refuge Restrooms is an open source application for finding trans safe restrooms. Um, for those who aren't familiar, if you're trans, you can't just like go out in public and just like go to a gendered restroom. A lot of times it involves finding a, a unisex restroom or finding a location that is safe. Um, you know, a business that is supportive of trans people. Um, you know, even being a white woman in Seattle, I, I find that difficult. Um, so finding um, places, you know, if we think of like in rural areas or if we, you know, think in less friendly areas, really being able to find someone that supports you so you can go out in public. A quick, few quick facts. Um, we're really lucky, we have people that work in web, iOS, Android, so you can find us all over the place. Um, we've really built a, a big following. Part of our contribution is submitting the restrooms and we've built up to over 21,000 listings worldwide. Um, we have filters, you can find unisex restrooms, you can find ADA accessible restrooms, and you can find changing tables, which might not be pushed to production yet, but I promise it's coming if it's not actually there. Um, and the big important thing I wanted to note here is it is founded and maintained by trans people, especially trans women. Um, I want you to keep this in your head the whole time because it's important like, not to erase this and not to uh, forget as we go. So a couple points before I get totally into my story. This is all unpaid labor. Um, I do want to like name that. I think it's another important fact to think of. Like we're all trans people doing work for our own community and not getting paid. Um, I often kind of to put this into context. I'm like, if I brought up the idea of like the bathroom app for bros, um, there's probably already like someone in Silicon Valley like listening to me right now, being like, hey, here's like two million dollars. Like, but that's not that's not the case. Um, we're really working for like our basic needs and, and not getting not getting that compensation um, and, and that also is because like trans people deserve nice things like once again this is like the basic need when we talk about using the correct pronouns finding bathrooms like who has to like who else has to navigate that space think about those things every day um, it's it's really gonna I want to push the idea that when we create these applications, when we create these spaces, to think about the most marginalized folks first. Um, you know, if you go on right now and go on the app store, you're gonna find so many restroom apps. And I think like, what would happen if somebody just like hired a trans person to, to build one of those first? Like, how much more accessible would that be? So I don't have slides for my story. I'm just gonna kind of talk. So I put a nice picture of my dog up there for you to look at. If you don't wanna look at me, although I am just as cute as her. Um, yeah, so I started working at Refuge about three years ago. Um, I was not out as trans. Um, I just saw on the, the, the Twitter, it's like, hey, come help us, come help us build things. Um, and you know, that was like an invite for me, like that was like, hey, I get to go be with other trans people and like use my skills and stuff like that. Um, and it just like opened up in this great space where it was just like free people hanging out in a hacker space being like, do whatever you want. Like just hang out with us, you know, if you need to get work done, if you need to get bugs done. I um, that really has helped me a lot. That mentality has helped me over the years in my job. Um, it's helped me to build this community out. Um, 
you know, part of that was I got friends out of that. You know, uh, Tegan is the founder of Refuge Restrooms, and it's been like such a great help throughout my last few years of my life to have somebody that I can look up to who's like doing badass work for her community um, and really making it open to others. Um, so that's been really key for me. Um, part of what happened with Refuge Restrooms in the past few years is the, the two of us just couldn't work on it all the time. We both had jobs, like I said, we're not getting paid for this. And it just became difficult to keep up with bugs, to keep up with requests, to keep up with even when other people had code to contribute, like having to take a look at that. Um, and I got to a point where, you know, in, in the past year being like, how do we fix this? And I don't know if I really like nail it down my head being like, these are the exact things to fix. I think it kind of came organically as, as we went through this process. but. A lot of it was just being like, going back to what I said before, like, come hang out with us. You know, like, come, come to, you know, this space that we're going to have. We're just going to have pizza and, like, have no expectations. You know, we'll tell you, like, our story or whatever. And, and if, you, if you get to fixing bugs and stuff, if you get to adding any sort of features, like, awesome. Like, that's, that's, that's been the end goal. And that's really brought us to this next this kind of like next step of the application where we're getting a lot more use, a lot more um, contributions from all different areas. Um, one of the things I've happened lately is we get such a wide set of skills. We get people who are writing documentation, writing things for end users. Like if you're a business and all of a sudden you see that you're in, like in this refuge restaurant app, like what's that mean? What can you do to be more inclusive around that? Um, we have people that come in and just like, hey, how do we make this more accessible to all sorts of folks? Um, like I said, we have iOS and Android folks. We have people working to modify like existing external APIs, like open source like map APIs that already have restroom um, data in them, but it wasn't you know made for trans people, right? Um, I think sometimes I think I'm like, oh, how many times are we just going to go to other people's apps and put like a Boolean flag in there, like is trans friendly? Um, and like people are doing that. Um, but yeah, and then we also get people just like tweeting at us and stuff. And that is contribution too. Um, and part of that is fostering, fostering that community and really uh, finding more people to reach out to. I like to share this code graph. Um, this is kind of that point where I was talking about, all the way to the left, where we can see a giant dip down. Um, that's kind of like me and Tegan being like, I can't do this anymore. Um, and then two years later, you see this increase a few months ago. Um, and that's really all that is. It's a pizza party. <laughs> it's literally a pizza party. Um, and then all of a sudden, like the next few weeks, we just got all these people coming to us, coming to our Slack, coming to our GitHub, coming just to say hi, um, and kind of having like increased contribution. The funny thing I think about this is code probably won't create that community. It's not, there's no inverse to that, right? Like if we create things code first, we're gonna have this big void. You know, like we, if we have this idea that like tech's gonna solve everything, it's not. Like, me talking to you, me bringing up ideas with you, that's going to solve problems. And we need to just, like, put people first, right? Like, it's not as hard of a concept as, like, some people make it out to be. People really like to just be like, oh, it's all about the code. Like, get the best people working on this. Um, and that's really self-serving when you think about it. You know, you're going to get to get this giant glob of code from this one person and you know, like, it's not going to be too helpful in the future. You're going to, like, maybe move slow, talk to people. Um, I think a lot about bringing this back into the workplace, too. Um, you know, like, the what's the tech model? Like, act fast and break things or whatever. Like, just don't. <laughs> maybe just don't do that. Maybe move slow and, like, make connections and, and foster relationships instead. Like I was saying, focusing on people has increased second time contributions. Originally I had this idea where here's a bug list. Come in, pick one of these bugs, do it. But that's really exclusive in itself, right? Like if you don't think you can solve one of those bugs or maybe you thought of something that isn't on that list, 
Instead, what if we said, hey, come hang out with us. Do whatever you want to do. Pick a project, pick whatever, and we'll, we'll help support you. Um, when I had this last hack day, I didn't even have any goals. Just like, hey, do a thing. I'll help you with whatever you want to do. And that's been more successful than handing somebody a task. Another thing is sharing, relation, sharing stories, fostering relationships. Um, you know, like if I'm focused on like just talking with somebody and just saying, hey, thanks for helping us, they're going to come back and they're going to help me do more work. Um, I had a note here that doesn't make sense to me anymore. <laughs> oh, this doesn't go away with money. I think there's a, it's kind of a problematic saying, but I know a lot of people have told me like, the goal is to pay you a salary where you don't have to think about money anymore. There's a lot around that that's problematic. But if we think about this in a way of like, I want to make you happy, you will do good work if you're happy, if you're doing work for yourself, if you're doing work for your community, then it's, it's a slightly different way of framing. Um, the last thing I kind of want to talk about is this. Um, for those who aren't familiar, Yelp introduced kind of like this, this idea of saying, like, is trans friendly Boolean flags into things? Um, here's Tegan, our, our founder, saying, well, you had Pokestop filters first. I'm totally OK with this change. I want every single application to have this built into their app. But what happens when it's corporate? What happens when it's no longer your own community doing the work? So I really want to end on this note. It's a truism, right? This is like a reflexive statement. A project built by the community it serves will serve its community. Let trans people do their work. <laughs> Support them. Give them money. They will get the best work done for themselves if they can. And, and, you know, like, don't hide that. Come back to that point at the beginning. Don't erase trans people. Let them build a safe and valuable world for themselves. So that's the end here. Uh, absolutely come chat with me. This is the Refuge uh, GitHub. This is our Twitter. Um, I am always happy to talk. I'm very, very available. You have like a